Okay, hi. Today I'm talking about something really fun, at least for me, and that is mid-century modern design. Mid-century modern. MCM. I feel like the words mid-century have had such a serious, significant impact on architecture and interior design in the last, like, few decades. And I feel like so many people are very confused about what it means. Like I see these words everywhere, it's impossible to shop for furniture and not see mid-century modern plastered like everywhere. And I just don't think enough people have like a solid understanding of what those words actually mean. So being the design nerd that I am and somebody that's weirdly obsessed with modernism, <laughs> I thought um, it could be interesting to talk about it and maybe bring some clarity to people who are confused about what mid-century modern design is, especially to people who group it with like aesthetic trends in interior design like boho or coastal or things like that, because it's so much more than that. Okay, so first we need to understand what modern even means when it comes to architecture and interiors. Modernism is not like a style or an aesthetic, it's an actual theory about how to design our spaces. I think I'll do a lot of videos in the future about modernism specifically, but Really briefly, it's all rooted in this idea of functionalism, meaning form follows function. So the intention or purpose of a space is always going to take priority over any sort of decorative aesthetic. And every time I talk about this, I need to really quickly point out that functions are not the same as utility. Like functions can be entirely concerned with a human experience, something like comfort or privacy or how a space makes someone feel. So modernism is a theory that can be interpreted a lot of different ways. But that being said, this idea of form follows function really often leads to an aesthetic of clean lines, simple geometries, and a rejection of unnecessary ornament. So that's modernism, but mid-century modernism is sort of a different conversation because it's much more specific. I made a brief TikTok about this, so maybe you've seen it, but modernism actually dates back to the 1800s and it came about as a response to global industrialization and these sort of new construction materials and methods that were coming about. And there's been a lot of unique movements happening under modernism ever since then. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you guys with like too much history, it's just really important to understand how mid-century modernism came about. So really notably in post-war America and Western Europe, modernism gained a lot of popularity. Some of the most influential architects and designers were really pushing the boundaries of design at this point in time, particularly in the Western United States, and you can look to the case study houses as an example of this. This was a project sponsored by Arts and Architecture magazine in the United States, and they were basically commissioning and encouraging architects and designers to experiment with residential housing and create a new blueprint for the American home that would be uh, innovative and efficient and affordable to accommodate for the housing boom after World War II. And these houses are primarily located in Southern California. I feel like there might be one in New Jersey or something, maybe a couple on the East Coast, but they're so inspiring to me. I just love seeing how different iconic architects interpreted residential design and modernism. And the case study house project included a few of my favorite designers like Richard Neutra and Charles Henry Eames. So that was in the late 40s. and. Those designers really sort of defined the blueprint that would take America by storm with the suburban development boom in the 50s and 60s. And this included the Eichler homes, which I just love so much. I mean, it's no secret that I love modernist design if you've seen any of my content, <laughs> but I just think what these architects and designers brought to the forefront of design at that time is so incredible. Like they introduced principles like blurring the interior with the outdoors and highlighting authentic materials and opening up space plans, which was largely thanks to the new at the time post and beam construction method. I mean, how cool are these houses, especially when you take into account what domestic spaces looked like before and even during and after. It's really, really incredible how revolutionary these designs were. But it is important to remember that not all buildings and interiors looked like this at that time. Like there was still traditional design happening in the mid-century. And separate from modernism, the 50s and 60s have their own unique language in fashion and style. But because these decades are when modernism sort of rose to the forefront, this idea of modern is really often confused or conflated with the style and fashion of that era. So I think it's really important to distinguish between the modernist principles of mid-century design and the sort of colors, patterns, even fonts that people really often group with them. Because I think this is where a lot of the confusion around the term mid-century modern comes from. And I especially want to stress this with 
buildings and furniture that aren't even vintage from the mid-century that are advertised as mid-century modern. Because in the 2000s and 2010s, there was this really strong revival of mid-century design and it became very trendy. And I think it just got really confused and misled. Like, it's really understandable to me why after the postmodern movement of the 80s and 90s, designers would use mid-century as a sort of shorthand for designs that had clean lines and simple geometries. But as people were more drawn to this again, I feel like retailers really tried to capitalize on it and just sort of lost the plot entirely. What ended up happening was just a huge amount of mass-produced mid-century furniture that wasn't created thoughtfully by any means. <laughs> like rather than considering the ideas behind mid-century modernism, these designs took a very literal approach and just replicated the language of furniture from the 50s and 60s. And beyond that, a lot of the furniture that's advertised as mid-century modern isn't even modernist. Like it could be a chair that just looks like a cheap reproduction of a traditional chair from the 1950s. Like to prep for this video, I actually went to Wayfair and typed in mid-century modern and the results are actually shocking. They're so far from the ideas behind mid-century modern. Like I feel like mid-century modern just became this like SEO term that everybody was using and it just kind of really tragically lost its meaning. And I also have some issues with the furniture that actually is clearly referencing actual mid-century modern designs because a lot of it is really cheaply made. Like I don't know if you've ever sat in a chair that looks like this, but they're very cheaply made. They're mass produced in a way that's not meant to last. It's really like a fast fashion equivalent in furniture. Like for example, I'm sitting in a vintage Aeroserenin executive chair and it's really, really well made. Maybe after I film, I'll take a picture to put right here. Um, but I've seen so many replications of this chair online that I'm sure would just not stand the test of time and would break down in a few years. So the way that these pieces are constructed, I think is reason enough to not buy them. But beyond that, there's something also really strange to me about the aesthetic of how they look because they're really clearly copying mid-century modernist furniture. But with that, they're also replicating elements that are not inherent to modernism and it ends up looking pretty kitschy and kind of themey. These things always really stand out to me. They're things like uh, angled tapered legs or tufted upholstery or a really obvious like 50s color palette or even just like a painfully obvious use of patterns or fonts from the 50s. And in my opinion these things that are like really obviously replicating a mid-century style just sort of end up feeling kind of silly. Like it just kind of feels artificial and like you're in like a themed 1950s diner. And like I said at the beginning, this whole like trend of mid-century revival has really led people to believe that it's just like some sort of style or aesthetic and I don't think they're really aware of the theory behind these designs. And on another note, I really hate the idea of like defining your interior style. But all these people are like defining their style as mid-century modern and they're creating spaces that are really, really not mid-century modernists. Like if you Google mid-century modern interior, you get all of these images that are just sort of a bastardization of the design principles set forward by those architects and designers from the mid-century. And to me, that's just really disappointing because I really believe in my heart that the reason people are drawn to mid-century modern spaces is because of the modernist principles behind the designs, which is sort of being lost with this thoughtless revival of a style. So ultimately, if you like mid-century modern design like I do, and you want to incorporate it in your space, but you want it to feel like it's done well, here's what I would recommend. Make sure the pieces you have that have this mid-century modern language to them are actually vintage from that era or from a place like Design Within Reach, which still produces really iconic mid-century designs, but they're really well crafted. Because again, those cheap mass produced like mid-century revival pieces are not built to last. And that in itself is actually against modernist theory. Like things should be well-crafted, high quality, and made to last generations. And then of those mid-century pieces that you're bringing in, I would look to buy pieces that are more timeless and don't feel like really loudly mid-century. Like if a piece feels almost like graphically mid-century and like makes you think of the Jetsons, if you really love it, that's fine, but maybe have like one or two pieces in your home, but I really wouldn't go overboard with this look because it just ends up feeling, again, really themey. There's a lot of details you can look at to avoid that look, but two things that I really like to specifically look for are the legs of the furniture. I prefer mid-century furniture that has like straight legs and not these angled tapered legs uh, because I think they can just end up looking like way too stylized. And also looking really carefully at the hardware, I think a lot of times mid-century hardware can look 
like really overly stylized. So I think going for a more simplified look is much more timeless. So I wouldn't go overboard with those really like obviously mid-century modern pieces, whether they be vintage or contemporary from a good retailer. Limit yourself to just one or two per room and then fill out the rest of the room with pieces that have the same sort of design theory behind them as your mid-century pieces. This is going to make your space feel much more thoughtfully designed and much more in line with the principles of modernism that really shaped mid-century modern design. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. Basically, I just think that designing around a theme, like trying to copy a mid-century modern space, will end up with a space that looks like this. It's much better, in my opinion, to design around ideas, something like the theory of modernism. It will just make your interior feel much more intentional and thoughtful. I really hope my thoughts make sense. I'm having a lot of fun talking about design on here, and it seems like some of you guys are enjoying these conversations. So if you like these kind of chats, make sure you subscribe and comment, like, engage, and all of that. And yeah, I'll see you next week.